Hello everybody, my name is Roger Kreis and I'm now going to present my bachelor's degree thesis in the unsupervised skill discovery and learning from pixels, which has been advised by professors Xavier Giro and Juan Jonieto. So to begin with, I'll set the basis of reinforcement learning, which is the key paradigm of this work. So reinforcement learning is a field of artificial intelligence which opens a channel for agents that integrate um, artificial intelligence components to learn from their environments. So uh, within this context, we consider an agent that takes actions and an environment that returns new states and reward signals um, as consequences of uh, that agent actions. So at each step, the agents visit a new state and need to figure out, uh, need to make a decision uh, whether to uh, take an action and uh, with, the, with this, the objective of the agents is to maximize the total sum of rewards that they receive from the environment. So, for example, in this case, we see the agent visit this grass state and needs to figure out whether to go left, which will give it a very negative reward for reaching the fire, or to go right, which will give it a very positive reward uh, for reaching the treasure. So, the way in that we model this decision-making is by means of this categorical probability distribution, which is namely the policy, and ideally, in this case, we would uh, like the policy to give a higher value to the probability of going right, given that the agent finds itself in this grass state. So, however, things are not that straightforward in many um, enforcement learning applications, where the value of taking an action is not defined by the immediate reward that the agent receives after that action. So here, for example, we would somehow need the agent to learn that the best thing that it can do, given that it finds itself in this grass state, is to go left through this fire, which will eventually get uh, to the treasure and not acting greedy and picking these coins. So let's now jump into an environment that is much similar to the one that we use uh, in this work. So what we're seeing here is a simplified top-down view of an apartment, which is provided by the habitat simulator that is the one that we use in our work and that renders these um, photorealistic views of uh, the interiors of apartments. So at this point we have like um, matched or uh, associated the reward distribution as a property of the environment, but we must not do this association since what the reward distribution defines is uh, a given task and in a, given, in a single environment we can define several different tasks. So for example, in this apartment here, we can consider the task of navigating to this screen. Um, and with this, we can define a reward distribution that rewards the agents at each step, depending on the distance between the agent and the screen. So with this configuration, the agents would uh, eventually learn that visiting this mirror state here is actually a good sign since it is close to the uh, navigation goal. So the agents would encode this mirror state as something that encodes value for achieving this task. But however, if we now change the task to the navigation to the fridge and we have to change the reward distribution so that we reward the agents at each step depending on the distance between the agent and the fridge, with this configuration, the agents would now learn that visiting the mirror state is not, uh, it, it is undesired since it is far away from the goal and would have to learn a representation from the mirror state that somehow encoded an undesired state. Now that actually limits the fact that we cannot just understand that there is a mirror here and that it has some unique properties, both in visual appearance or in, in relation within the environment. So uh, we can only understand the uh, surroundings of the agents with respect to how valuable are the, the a given state uh, for achieving a downstream task or for achieving a single uh, navigation goal in this case. So for this, um, there's goal condition reinforcement learning, which tries to generalize and to limit and to relax this limitation. So in goal condition RL, we consider these condition rewards uh, distributions and condition policies and behaviors. Um, so in some sense, we can uh, learn that visiting the mirror state can be valuable if we want to reach the screen, but also can be not desired if we want to reach the, uh, the fridge in this case. So it tries to build a more generalist paradigm. So from now on, we will only consider um, this visual embodied navigation where we consider an environment that only returns a stage to the agent in form of images and the only information that the agent sees and has available for tuning their behaviors is all uh, consist of images. So 
the most popular approach for um, extracting uh, representations for images here is to append a convolutional neural network to extract the image features and then uh, a fully connected head on top for eventually extracting the uh, representation or the embedding of that image. So the question here, or the challenge is, how should we train these neural networks and with what criteria uh, should we do it? So what representations do we aim to learn from images that actually represent points in space in a 3D environment? So we tackle this from a very generalist paradigm, which is um, explore, discover and learn, which we will refer to as ADL and has been um, developed by Victor Campos. So with EDL, we try to, or we aim to apply it uh, in an environment without considering any reward distribution or any single task, any, any oriented task. Um, so we want to extract um, generalist knowledge from the environment, both in form of state representations and also from um, baseline behavior. So for achieving this, EDL uh, splits the end-to-end -end process in these three tasks of exploration, discovery and learning. So we, in exploration, we want to visit uh, and explore as many representative states as possible from the environment. So we want to take into account all the available information and all the available variability that exists in our environment. Then in the discovery phase, we want, we want to learn these um, valuable and meaningful state representations. And also we want to discover a set of goals that we will interpret them to be navigation goals in this same representation space. So we want to learn the representation, this mapping, and then a set of the most valuable representations to interpret in as navigation goals precisely here in the learning phase where we will try to learn these goal, con this goal condition policies uh, in order to make the agents learn to reach the navigation goals defined by these representations here. So key to this idea of EDL is the definition of an information theoretic objective and in this case, we consider the maximization of the mutual information. So this comes from the empowerment literature um, of reinforcement learning. So the idea of using an information theoretic objective here is to drive the agent's learning uh, in some way in absence of any other um, reward distribution since we're not considering any task to be achieved. We want just to extract very generalist knowledge from the environment. So we need to somehow drive the agent's learning and in empowerment, we use this information, um, this mutual information tool. So uh, originally, uh, the authors of EDL used the forward form of the mutual information, which operates here we see in the state space. And this makes sense for the reuse case where, used, where they use the EDL paradigm in a, in a maze scenario where the uh, state space is defined by 2D coordinates. And hence, it makes sense to relate this um, distance in the environment to this distance between 2D coordinates. But as we deal with the image state space, uh, we cannot relate the distance in the environment space to the distance between images, and that's why we will um, derive the reverse form of the mutual information um, as an information theoretic objective, which we see here is an operation that um, happens in the representation space. So. Uh, regarding, let's now jump into our approach for implementing EDL, so regarding exploration phase, what we want to do here is uh, learning this or taking into account all this information in the, uh, in the environment. So we see that uh, what we do is apply uh, agents that perform random actions in the environment and we just collect their trajectories and their experiences. So we craft a data set with the, with the observations that they see with this random exploration. And we see that if we deploy the agents to start in a single, in the same position at each episode, uh, we're not capable of capturing all the available information on the environment due to its complexity in dynamics. So for that, we allow the agents to start in different positions at each episode. And with that, we see that we're kind of estimating a uniform um, probability distribution over the state space of this environment. So now in the discovery phase, we first leverage a contrastive approach, which is trained in a self-supervised way. So the idea of this approach is to learn an encoder that uh, when we fit uh, pairs of images that we either label as positive pairs or negative pairs, we want this encoder to map the positive pairs um, closer in the embedding space that it learns to project its representations. So, um, for that, uh, we define the positive pairs of images as two images that belong to the same exploration trajectory. And with that, we aim to learn 
an encoder that preserves both the visual resemblance between the images and the, vis the visual uh, differences as well, and also the spatial relations between the points in space where these images were captured. So that's why we label the positive pairs as two images belonging to the same exploration trajectory. And when these encoders are trained already, we use this k-means clustering in the embedding space to um, extract the set of the k most uh, valuable or meaningful um, representation. So with that, we assume that if we've, if we've got a model, a good model from states to representations, and then we extract the most meaningful representations, we will also be extracting the most meaningful states of the environment. So then we also leverage a reconstruction approach here where we that we train in a self-supervised way again, um, that we feed the images from our collected experiences and try to learn representations of that images that can be mapped into a code word of this model and then can be reconstructed from this code word. So here this model has a code book of size k. So uh, after this model is trained here, we just extract, uh, extracting these um, <clears throat> most valuable representations is straightforward since we just extract the k uh, code words of the model which turn, to be, turn out to be the most um, valuable or uh, more generalistic um, embeddings that we have learned in this training process. So finally, in the learning phase, we consider two different tasks. So in skill learning, we make use of the set of the defined goals that uh, the K embeddings that we extracted. So for example, uh, we can sample uh, this green centroid embedding from representing this room here. So we want the agents to navigate effectively to the room, to the green room, uh, being its policy conditioned with the centroid embedding. So here we condition the navigation policy with an embedding and we want the agents to navigate to the point in space represented by that embedding. And then we also use the image goal condition navigation, which is a task provided by Habitat. Uh, so we've got a data set of 80,000 uh, images and points in space belonging to a single apartment. So at each episode, which is represented by an image goal, we want the agent to learn to navigate from an initial location to the point in space uh, from which this image was captured. So we'll, we try to learn both navigation uh, behaviors for both tasks, but here we're conditioning with our self-discovered uh, embeddings and here with the uh, images from the data set. So for tackling the skill learning, which is the first uh, task that we saw before, we make use of the pre-trained encoders here in the discovery phase and then at each episode we sample a navigation goal from our set and use the concatenation of embeddings here to train a parametric policy on top. So with that we craft a reward distribution which maximization actually coincides with the maximization of the reverse form of the mutual information. So here we see that we're only giving a reward of one to the agents if they perform an action which brings the state the agents to a new state where the encoding of that new state is most similar to the conditioning goal among all the embeddings from the uh, set of uh, navigation goals. So we see that we're computing a similarity or a distance here in an embedding space. So this is happening in the representation space and we're defining that as a reward distribution that we aim to maximize. So that's why we say that this objective coincides with the maximization of the mutual information and of the reverse form in this case. So. Uh, for the other task, for image goal condition navigation, we see that at each episode we've got an image goal and the agents see only the image goal and the current observation. So the baseline approach for tackling this is to uh, train three different neural networks. So one convolutional one for uh, learning features from the image observations and then a, no a separate convolutional uh, network for learning features from uh, the image goals and then a third neural network uh, to parameterize the policy built on top of these features. So our approach to uh, compare to this baseline approach is just to use the pre-trained encoders here that we use and that we learn in the discovery phase. So we um, freeze their parameters here and we just train the policy on top of this, um, of this schema. So now let's summarize the results of all the phases that we were mentioning. So for skill discovery, we see that when we feed the models with RGB data, we obtain with the contrastive approach a very clear segmentation of the state space. So we see uh, that we're encoding the unique properties of each room and we're actually encoding the uh, visual properties and also the spatial relations within this environment, which arguably are the most valuable um, features for 
for agents that aim to try and to learn navigation skills in the environment. So we see uh, that we're capturing these unique properties uh, for each uh, room very, in a very meaningful way and without any annotations or motivation for doing that. And also the reconstruction approach finds some interesting patterns as well, but as the navigation areas or goals are not as easy to interpret, we rather consider using the contrastive representations that we learn here. So here we see in this reward map that with the reward distribution that we crafted, for example, if we consider the centroid of this uh, cluster here, uh, if we condition the agents to navigate to this uh, embedding here, uh, being the centroid of this cluster, we will only be giving rewards to the agents if they navigate in this yellow area, meaning that it actually makes sense and that what we're doing of relating these similarities between embeddings of observations um, to actually um, zones in space. So we're obtaining a meaningful segmentation of the reward distribution depending on the goal that we're um, conditioning with in this case. So here we try to generalize uh, our models and see if they are robust and consistent to work in other apartments as well without demanding any further configuration of their architectures and we see that with the contrastive approach we're actually achieving precisely that. So it is easy, applicable to other apartments and it is also learning these segmentations of the state space that are very clear and does not happen the same with the reconstruction approach which struggles uh, much more uh, for generalizing. So here we're summarizing the um, performance of the skill learning phase. So overall the objective of the agents is only to maximize this reward course. So it is actually doing so but uh, we're getting to a stable value of 115, which is actually pretty decent since we're only leaving the agents for 150 steps and they can only receive a reward of one at each step. So it makes, uh, it is actually pretty decent behavior here. And this curve is showing that we're actually um, achieving that the agents navigate to the different rooms depending on what navigation goal we are uh, conditioning with at each episode. So uh, here we summarize the performance of the image goal condition navigation task. And in blue, we show our, our approach of transferring the uh, pre-trained encoders. And then in, in purple, we see uh, the baseline approach. And we see that we consistently outperform the baseline um, approach for tackling this task, since we're achieving higher rewards in average and less distance to goal and higher success and success weighted by path length here as well. So these metrics here are only positive if the agents actually uh, are capable of reaching the navigation goal. So uh, we see that we are outperforming the baseline approach and this is consistently happening for other uh, apartments as well. So we obtain the same conclusions from this view of uh, this second circular apartment here. And then for the last one, it is a much more difficult to see any uh, increase in the performance here since this is a very complicated environment in uh, dynamics. So we consider that we would need more sophisticated architectures here, both for the encoders and for the parametric policy on top to see a, a difference here in the performance. So um, just to finish, I've got two videos showing the performance of the agents in this second uh, image condition task. So we see the agents view here and then we see the image goal of this episode and here in green we see the shortest path to the point in space where this image goal was captured and we can also see the trajectories of the agent. So we see a very intelligent behavior here of the agent leaving the room very fast after rotating it leaves the room it goes through the door in a very efficient way and then it finally reaches the point in space where this image was captured so it finds success in this, uh, in this uh, episode. So we've got another video in another, in the circular apartment in this case. So I like this one as well. So we see the agent again act a very intelligent way. So it goes into the room and as soon as it does not find any success, uh, it goes back, it turns uh, backwards and it eventually reaches, it's a very, very lucky here, but eventually reaches a point in space that is less than one meter away from the and navigation goal, so it finds success in this episode. But we see again a very intelligent behavior here after entering and then turning backwards and leaving the room. So just to finish, I just would like to say that uh, this work has been peer reviewed 
in this CVPR workshop on embodied AI, where we had the opportunity to present with my supervisors via gather time. And in total, we submitted and we were accepted um, these two papers in this workshop. And then uh, we're waiting for a notification of acceptance that will go out in two days for this third and supervised reinforcement learning workshop in ICML. Um, so let's hope for another publication here. And that would be everything. I just wanted to add that I'm very thankful for my um, supervisors for all the effort that they have put and for everything that they have taught to me during this project. So um, I've learned and enjoyed a lot with them. So I will now be open to answer any questions. So thank you very much.